Good afternoon, uh, class. We are uh, looking at uh, practice test number two for module two, covering chapters three and four. Here's chapter uh, three functions. We covered a big chunk of it. So we are going to move on to where we last finished the job. Will be left off. All right, for the given function f of x or y equals 2x minus 7, we are interested in finding the inverse. So, in order to find the inverse, we take the following steps. Number one, we're going to change f of x to y because it makes it a tad easier to work with. The first step interchange x and y after this. So we're going to replace the y and change it to x. We replace the x and we change it to y. So interchange these two. Here's the next step. So y becomes x, x becomes y. Right in this step, we do have the inverse. However, we normally solve for y. Therefore, we are going to move on by moving the 7 to the other side and divide by 2. So move the 7 to the left. Minus 7 becomes plus 7. Let's divide both sides by 2. When we divide both sides by 2, this goes away. In other words, and we're going to change the y to f inverse. So this is the inverse function, and we are done. To prove we haven't come up with the wrong answer, we look at their uh, composite function, either f of inverse or f inverse of f. As long as you do one of them is good enough. So for example, if I want to do f of f inverse, all I have to do in the f function, replace the x with f inverse. So what happens is, These two cancel each other. We have x plus 7 minus 7, which makes it x. And that's a proof that we have come up with the proper answer. Now, you can also do f inverse of f. As long as you do one of them is good enough. But quickly, let me show you if I were to do f inverse of f. And again, you don't have to do both. So I'm going to start with f inverse. And I'm going to put the f instead of x. I can cancel out the negative and positive 7. I can cancel out the 2 and this checks. That one checked also. Again, you don't have to do both methods, but this is good enough. Let's continue with this function. In order to make this easier, we're going to change f of x to y. We are going to interchange x and y. So this becomes x. And this to change to y. And right here, we do have the inverse. However, we solve for y. And to solve for y, we do the cross product. So if you multiply this, by this x times y. Let's just write it here, x times y plus 2 plus 1 times y. So the third step, we get xy plus 2x equals y. Since we are solving for y, 
we can move things around. The reason I'm going to move the x y to the right rather than this y to the left because this is only one step if I want to solve for y I have to move 2x to the right either so this is the least number of steps and when I do that I get 2x equals y minus x y on the right side I can factor the y out And if I divide both sides by one minus X, I get the answer and I'm gonna change the Y to F inverse. And this is the answer. Now, what I wanna mention here class, if, Right here, we had moved it differently, meaning if we move the y to the left, 2x to the right, we would get this answer. Please understand these two are the same. If you multiply this one, the top and the bottom by negative sign, you get this one. So this has the least number of negative sign. It doesn't matter which one you use, and it doesn't matter how you use, how, how to move it, as long as you know how to come up with the answer. Now, the composite function is x. So what do we do? We look at one of them, for example, f or f inverse of x, we start with that, which means into this function f of x, we are going to replace the x with f inverse. So this goes in here, this goes in here, and we have a complex fraction. Now, how do we simplify complex fraction? It's very simple. Multiply the top and the bottom by the LCD. You have only one at top, one at the bottom. So the LCD is one minus X. But if you have more fractions, it makes no difference. You find the LCD for all of them. So we're going to multiply by, by one minus X over one minus X. Clearly, this is equal to one and it's acceptable. When you multiply these two, this goes away, you get two X. When you multiply these two, so the top gives you two X, the bottom. This one goes away, gives you two X. And this one is plus two times one minus X. So again, the top, one minus X goes away. The bottom, so let me just write it in this fashion so it becomes clear. You're multiplying this one by this one. You're multiplying this one by this one. This is what you get. And all you have to do, simplify the denominator and you're fine. This is two minus two X. These two cancel each other. These two cancel each other. Two X over two is x and that's a proof that we have come up with the correct answer so it's really a good practice to check and recheck your work always use function composition to verify that these two functions are inverse functions Well, all you have to do, look at the composite function, right? Since f of f inverse equals x, show that the composite function is x. That's the definition of two functions that are inverse of each other. So that means if I want to go with f o g, all I have to do, replace the x with x cubed plus one. As you can see, these two cancel each other, positive one, a negative one. And so cube root of x cubed is x. That's a proof. You can also show g o f. I'm going to quickly show you. You don't have to do both ways. But just for practice, it means replace the x with the expression cube root of x minus 1. And since you're raising this to the third power, it comes out as x minus 1 negative one cancels out the positive one and you get X. So both ways you proved it. And again, you don't have to prove it both ways. One is good enough. 
we are given a function and we want to sketch the inverse whose graph is shown. Uh, in general, you can draw a line y equals x, okay, which goes through the origin and then reflect it with respect to that line. And if it's hard to see the concept, all you have to do, pick easy pairs and interchange them. So what I'm gonna write at the bottom and I'm gonna remind you is this. If the pair A comma B belongs to F, this is an element of, this is how you read it, an element of, then B comma A belongs to its inverse. So if you find any pair on this one, then reverse the X and Y coordinate, you have a pair for its inverse and go with easy pairs, okay? Look at this pair, for example, this is easy one, seems to have a coordinate minus two, minus four. That is a pair on F of X. And, and what basically this is, I'm gonna go through the process. It says the minus four comma minus two belongs to its inverse. So the way you would write this, you would write f of negative two is negative four. That's the meaning of it. So f inverse of negative four is minus two. So the meaning of it is this. What we are interested in from this pair, take a look at this pair. We go to this pair, that's all. These are really the interpretation with more details. This belongs to this graph. Interchange x and y belongs to its inverse. Okay, let's go with another example. So first and foremost, this is minus four minus two. So if we were to graph, now let's pick this easy pair. This has coordinate zero, four. If zero, four is on the graph of this given function, that means four, zero must belong to its inverse. Therefore, we're gonna write f of zero equals four, which means f inverse of four must be zero. But more, more importantly, this pair replace the reverse the zero and four. Four zero belongs to F inverse. So this one. Easy pairs. And you can pick, if this is not enough, you can pick a couple more points. Okay. This is another pair on this graph, which is easy. It seems to be negative one and three. So negative one, three belongs to f of x, three comma negative one belongs to f inverse. So we can write it as f of negative one is three, f inverse of three is negative one, and therefore three negative one is part of f inverse. And so with that being the case, all you have to do, put these three pairs, okay? So put this, three pairs, minus two, minus four, gives us this pair, minus four, minus two. Zero, four, gives us four, zero. And negative one, three will give us three, negative one. So if you were to graph this, okay, looks something like that. They can look, looking like that. And that's the line y equals x, two pairs here, two pairs here, and another pair. So those are the pairs that helped us craft the inverse function. Sketch the graph of this function. This is known as piecewise defined function.
And so what it says, the graph f of x is the same as minus x plus one from negative one and one, including negative one, but not at one. At x equals one equals to two. This really gives us, just for the sake of argument, so everybody can see the, the meaning of this is the following pair when x is one, y is two. That's the meaning of it. And it becomes this function, y equals x squared, when x is larger than. First, uh, it says evaluate a few points. Let me evaluate a few points. Then I'm going to show you an easy way to graph this by hand. So here's how you uh, do that. Let's uh, go. I, I see negative 1. I see 1. So I'm going to use negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So those are easy pairs. For negative 1, it says when it's negative 1, you can use this one. I hope you see that if I put negative one, I get positive one and one is two. Then for zero, between the two, I can use this function. So I'm gonna put it here and I get one for zero. For one, I don't have an equality and I have the pair here, one comma two. Then if I wanna go with number two larger than one, I gotta go for this one, two squared is four. If I wanna go for three, three squared is nine, okay. And so I have those pairs. I can draw those. But the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to show you an easy way. If this function, the top one is y equals negative x plus 1, it's a line. All you need is a couple of pairs. You can graph this. So let me write it here. So I'm going to call this, let's say, y sub 1 equals minus x plus 1. And I'm going to graph this for now by using a couple of easy pairs, okay? For example, we have a negative one, two. If I plug in a zero, I get one. Um, if I uh, replace uh, y, x equal to zero, I get one if I replace one. Um, one, I get zero, and it looks like this. So this is the line. Again, I'm not paying any attention, class. I'm not paying any attention to this yet. Yet, I have to. But I'm showing you, this is the graph. Okay, fine. This is one pair. It's just one comma two. Okay, one comma two, which means one comma two, one pair. And this is y equals x squared. Again, I'm not paying any attention to that. So this is y equals x squared. And this is the pair one comma two. So now we're gonna go back and be very careful as to what this means and have the proper answer. Now, this says when x is negative one, we can use this and we know at negative one, it is two. So this is negative one, it's two. So it starts from here and it goes all the way to one. If you plug in one, you get zero. So if you plug in one, you get zero, but it's not included. So over here, we need a hole. So notice what happens on the line from here to here. It's the answer. This one is included. This one is not included. Look at the reason. You still have this pair. And what about y equals x squared? What about this graph? This graph starts when x is larger than 1. So if you plug in 1 into this function, you get 2. And from there on, you see, the, the, again, this is a little bit, you know, not to scale. So at that point, if you, my apologies, if you plug in one, you get one. At this pair, it starts from here, but this is not included and it goes up again. So the graph is this part, this part, and this point. This is the graph. And I showed you, you draw this line, you draw the parabola, you draw the pair, and then you pay attention to the restriction, you have the graph. Now, what is the domain of this function? 
it starts from here. See, since this is uh, a solid dot starts from negative one and, and it goes to infinity. But what about the range? The range, all the positive side of the y coordinate. And since this is a whole, zero is not included. So zero to infinity, but zero is not included. And we use parentheses to represent that. A quick recap, graph this line, graph this pair, graph this function, and then pay attention to the restriction, you get to this one. And pay attention why we have a hole here, okay? We have a hole here, we have a hole here because we have a pair here. So uh, if any of them is solid, then we won't have a function. Remember there's only one possibility for X and so Find the average rate of change for this function from two to four, and then from four to four plus h. Simply put, it means f of b minus f of a over b minus a, or there are different ways of writing. I mean, this case would be f of four minus f of two over four minus two. That's part a. So plug in four, we get four squared minus three times four. Plug in two, we get two squared minus three times two, and uh, four minus two is two. So f of four, this is 16, minus three times four is 12. f of two, two squared is four, uh, two times minus three is minus six. And we can simplify as follows. Four minus minus two, this changes to six over two and that's three. We do the same thing for part B. F of four plus H minus F of four over H. Later on, we see that as this function, F of A plus H minus F of A over H in general, and specifically from uh, four to four plus H. So plug in four plus H here. So we get four plus h squared minus three times four plus h and four, you have a choice. Remember when we plugged in four, we had four or just evaluated, either way is fine. Now we need to uh, square this and I'm gonna remind you. A plus b squared is a squared plus two AB plus B squared. So this is four squared or 16 plus two times four times H, eight H plus H squared, uh, minus 12 minus three H. Now this is 16, this is 12. So 16 minus 12, and you can distribute the negative. It doesn't matter what you do here, but the reason I kept it like this, because perhaps it's easy to see the following, this number and this number and this number and this number, they all add up to zero. So you have eight H and minus three H. So the top becomes H squared plus five H only. Factor the H from the numerator, drop it from the top and the bottom, and the final answer is H plus five. It's very simple. We're going to look at uh, the next chapter, which is linear functions. Find the value of x if a linear function goes through the following points as the following slope. So we have the given pair x comma two minus four comma six. We have this slope and we are looking to find x. So I'm going to remind everybody a few things we've done already. Standard form of a line, ax plus by equals c. 
slope intercept for y equals mx plus b. Point slope, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x of 1. Vertical line x equals a, slope is undefined, x intercept takes place at a comma 0. Horizontal line y equals b, slope equal to 0, y intercept takes place at 0 comma b. Two lines are considered parallel if they have equal slopes but different y intercepts. Two lines are considered perpendicular if the product of their slope is negative 1. You can say m1 is negative 1 over m2 or m2 equals negative 1 over m1 or their product is negative 1, either way. So 1 is the negative reciprocal of the other. And to find the slope is rise over run, y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, delta y over delta x or rise over run. And in this case, we are going to write m is 3 equals, and we're going to write 6 minus 2 over minus 4 minus x. So we use the formula for the slope to do the math here. So with that being the case, all we have to do, cross product. So if you multiply these two, you get three times minus four minus x. And if you multiply these two, it's one times four. So the denominator becomes, so the, the left side becomes minus 12 minus 3x. We are going to move this to the other side and we're going to make it 16. So x is negative 16 thirds. Negative, the missing value we are looking for is negative 16 thirds, everybody. Could somebody read this, please? I can read it. Please. Consider this scenario. A town has an initial population of 75,000. It grows at a constant rate of 2,500 2, per year. Find the linear function that models the town's population P as a function of the year T, where T is the number of years since the model began. Thank you so much. We are familiar with y equals mx plus b. And in this case, we are going to replace the y with a p. And p, the population, is a function of time t. So mt plus b. That's important to understand. Now, I'm going to go over the explanation. There's really not much that you can just plug in. But the explanation is that P of t is the population as a function of time. M is the constant rate of growth of a function. In this case, it's 2,500 per year. T is the time elapsed in units of year. B is the initial population, which in this case, it's 75,000. The linear function in this case is P of t equals 2,500 t plus 75,000. So 75,000 is the initial value is the value that represents the population in the beginning. All right, monthly cost of a cellular plan depends on the number of minutes used and a flat fee, 410 minutes cost us 71.50, 720 minutes cost us 118 bucks. We wanna express cost C as a linear function of the monthly minutes used x. So remember, we normally have x comma y, but now we have x comma c. That's the idea. So minutes and cost x comma c instead of x comma y. C is the dependent variable. C is the dependent variable. All right. And so 
Let's go through the process in order to find the equation. First, we need to find the slope and you remember the slope is rise over run, y sub two minus y sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. We're gonna say c sub two minus c sub one over x sub two minus x sub one now, okay? Same concept. So 118 minus 7150 is in the numerator, 720 minus 410 is in the denominator. So rise over run. I put it with the good old uh, y's over x's so you can compare and contrast. If you like, you can do this, which will help you see what's going on. Uh, you can put here x comma y and so you can see the transition from y to c uh, the numerator is 46.5 the denominator is 310 you do the math 3 over 20 or 0 0.15 uh, you can go with a decimal because uh, first of all it's exact if it's not you want to stick with the fraction either way is fine and because we are dealing with money we can go with decimal so uh, as you recall, y minus y1 equals, let me write that. The formula was y minus y1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. All right, so the transition is now c minus c sub 1 is m times x minus x sub 1. Okay, uh, again, write the one, the formula that you're comfortable with and then uh, make the transition. So in this case, C minus C sub one, if uh, we want to use this one, for example, we would say C minus 118 equals M 0 0.15 or three over 20 either way times X minus 720. Uh, the reason I use this one, this doesn't have a decimal, perhaps it's a tad easier and so, uh, on the right side, if you apply the 3 over 20 or 0. 0.15, this is 0. 0.15 times x or 3 20, 3 20th of x. This one, since it's divisible by 20, you multiply it by 3 and you get minus uh, 108. So we move the negative 118, becomes positive 118, and with that, they add up to 10. So I want to make sure that we can see this is moving. And this is the cost in general, or you can put 0 0.50. By the way, uh, I want to make sure you understand how you check your work. This is the pair we used. We didn't use this pair. So to check if you plug in 410, it must give you the cost of 7150. I'm going to leave it for you to check it. It's important to check before you move on. Again, this is the pair we used. This is the pair that we didn't, and we're going to check. Now, what is the cost using 687 minutes? Replace the X with 687 minutes. And do the math. It gives you $113.05. By the way, since we are dealing with money, we go to the third decimal, and we do the rounding to the second one. Okay? So that if, if this is the answer, we are done. If... We have more decimals. The third one makes a decision for the second one. Remember that. And finally, what is the meaning of the slope? And the C-intercept. The C-intercept represent the fixed monthly cost flat fee charged by company, which is 10 bucks. According to this formula, they charge us 10 bucks no matter what. And the slope is 3 over 20 or 0 0.15. The slope represents the change in cost per minute of call for the amount of 0.15 dollars or 15 cents per minute. That means for every minute, they charge us 15 cents. And so however many minutes times 15 cents plus the fixed cost, the flat rate of 10 bucks that we were being charged in the first place. Could somebody read this, please? The height in inches of a sunflower x weeks after being planted can be approximated by the function f of x equals 6x minus 1 fourth times x 
squared. Um, how tall is a sunflower eight weeks after planting? Excellent. Simply put, class, you replace the X with eight. That's all there is to it. We are interested in F of eight. Replace the X with eight. So this is six times eight. This is minus four of eight squared. Six times eight is 48, eight squared is 64. So 48 minus one fourth of 64, which is 16. And the answer is 32. And pay attention to units. 32 inches. Anytime we do applications, we do it, we answer it back with proper units. Now it's asking to find the average rate of growth from the end of week six to the end of week 12. That means we want f of x sub two minus f of x sub one over x sub two minus x sub one. We want delta y over delta x, which is f of 12 minus f of six over 12 minus six. So we're gonna plug in 12. Evaluate it. We're going to plug in six and evaluate it. The denominator is 12 minus six, which is six. So 12 goes into that, gives you six times 12 minus one fourth of 12 squared. Six goes in there, six times six minus one fourth of six squared. And now you do the uh, adding and subtracting and all the good stuff. So this is 72. This is 144. This is 36. This is also 36. One fourth of it is nine. And what we have is 72 minus 36 minus 36 plus 9. And we write it here. I hope that the whole thing becomes 9. And 9 over 6 simplifies to 3 halves. Now, units of the numerator over the units of the denominator, inches per week because this is the number of weeks, this is uh, the height, therefore, what it means on the average from week six to week 12, the plant, the sunflower was increasing at an average of three halves of an inch per week. That's the meaning of it. A fitness club charges 20 bucks as a monthly access fee and two bucks per day of use. Again, this is very similar to the previous questions we've done. Not much of explain, explanation is needed. Express the monthly cost C in terms of daily usage. So first you have to say, what is going to represent the number of uh, days, in this case, X, and so C, remember X comma Y, now it's X comma C. So C or C of X is this flat charge of 20 bucks plus $2 per day. So two times X plus 20, two times X plus 20. And uh, how much is the cost for 15 days? For 15 days, plug in. 15 instead of X. This is 30 and 20. They add up to 50. The total cost is 50. 